Hey everybody, so today's video is going to be just kind of a beginner's guide to truing wheels. Um, so, kind of in my video I did before talking about the truing stand and kind of going off the uh, four dimensions of basically what you want to shoot for, or what what are involved in truing a wheel. So, you know, your basic dimensions are going to be your your radial run out, your lateral, your side to side run out, your spoke tension, and your dish. So, you know, centering the rim between the two points there that contact either your frame or your fork. Um, so anyway, kind of some other equipment um, that's important and obviously like your like a little spoke wrench. Um, I use this little park one here in the demonstration. Um, but probably my favorite are the DTs. This is one of the DT spoke key tools, but the ones we use at work are um, even a little nicer. Um, they're pretty sweet. You could, they allow for a little tool to uh, got one of these that kind of will hold a bladed spoke. And but anyway, those are some of some of those tools. Some other tools you you know you might want to use consider having or using would be a um, either a wheel dishing tool, which honestly I rarely use a wheel dishing tool. Sometimes I will, but you know, kind of goes back to having your truing stand set up correctly to where everything's square and the um, you're going to get an accurate dish measurement just from the the calipers here. Um, another tool would be a, a, a tensiometer, which um, sometimes I'll use those on some kind of exotic wheel builds and things like that but typically I just I've built so many at this point that I, I've got a pretty good idea just from squeezing the spokes there or kind of where we're at and uh, so anyway let's um some of the some common mistakes before we kind of jump into it that I'll see a lot of beginners make is um, uh, number one is not knowing it can be confusing knowing which way to turn the the spoke nipple there, which is essentially just a nut. You basically have your spoke, which is like a long screw, and then your nipple, which is basically just a nut. And, you know, a couple ways. One way I can just visualize by looking, if you look straight into the rim, it's just like the same as any attaching any bolt. You turn it clockwise there to tighten it. But I saw a video that uh, Calvin Jones did where he was kind of used a water bottle as a kind of a point of reference so you know it's like you know which way you're unscrewing or tightening the bottle you know it's kind of the same if you can just think about having a bottle there and that's your that's your spoke that's your nipple so you know that way is to loosen you know it's the same with the spoke wrench that's the ways to tighten so you can kind of use that as, your, as a visual reference that kind of helps um, you know one other thing I noticed that a lot of beginners uh, kind of get into is they'll they just turn the turn the get spokes tighter 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 and then they never really back anything off they never back the tension off um, so it, it's kind of give and take all the way around you know that's kind of is what gets it really round there is you know if you're bringing a wheel up to tension from a brand new wheel it's kind of a different story but just general truing sometimes you gotta it's not all just about tightening uh, tightening up the spokes there. Um, so, you know, other than the fact that, you know, like this wheel here, for example, is a front wheel, so the angle of the spokes are going to be pretty symmetrical. On a rear wheel, the drive side, the spokes are going to be more up and down compared to the spokes going at an angle there on the non drive side. So, that, that's something you want to consider. Um, so, before I got a d demonstration of a wheel that we're going to do, but before we get into that, I've got kind of a little uh, thing I drew up and um, kind of maybe it'll help you to visualize kind of the method I guess that I use to true wheels, which is honestly I've looked at a few videos in the past few days of uh, other people instructing how to true wheels and you know honestly I've never watched any wheel truing videos. I kind of learned it just from other folks and you know I've been to a couple uh, week-long schools actually a few years ago and th this is kind of the point that got my attention is some of the methods that a lot of the schools um, some of the 
you know the bigger schools that are week long you go and then you know you may focus uh, a day or so or a few hours on wheel truing or wheel building and I kind of feel like a lot of the methods that are shown there or what you see on videos on YouTube are maybe simple in concept but in actual the actual reality it's it can be confusing um, but let's let's look at my little drawing and we'll kind of go over some of that okay so I've got kind of just a drawing simulation here of a um, basically a, a hub this kind of just if you were to cut a wheel in half as you're looking at it in the truing stand we got our hub here um, this would kind of simulate a cross section of the rim and then these are going to be the two jaws of the uh, or the calipers there that have the ability to move in and out simultaneously or up and down simultaneously um, so before we get into that just a couple things and this is your uh, it's a typical rear hub so if we kind of take this center line here that's just basically the line of the axle just going through and then as far as a perpendicular line which would be the center point between this is your two lock nuts or you know the point that some of the newer hubs they don't have necessarily lock nuts they just have a stop that goes right up against the bearing anyway that's the point that's going to contact your dropouts in your frame it's front wheel will be contacting the dropouts in your fork so anyway this is the center point of these two this is just kind of a you know I've measured the, the the basic center there so as you can see this center point is not the center point between the two hub flanges where the spokes are going to run through so if we draw you know have our center line that's going perpendicular straight down ideally our cross section of our rim is going to be centered on that area which of course depending on spoke tension it's it's not going to be you know you spin a wheel that's warped a little bit or bent you'll see the rim you know it may fluctuate like this or it may you know do some weird it's going to be moving around just like whatever you're not going to see it as the wheel turning just sitting in a where it looks like it's not moving which ideally that's what you want to hope for at the end so anyway if you kind of look at these spoke angles here you'll see the drive side spoke angle so this is our free hub body that's where you have to make room for all the gears that's why this line is so shallow compared to the non-drive side spoke line there so um, so kind of what we're going to do is as we spin the wheel you're going to see this you know say it's just a little side to side you'll see it move in and out like that so we can what, what I see typically let's just go first off what I typically see I'll see people have the jaws adjusted like so or maybe they'll pull one out of the way or take the jaw all together so you got this moving around and yeah you can move that into where it starts hitting so as you tighten the spokes on this side what's going to happen is that's going to pull it to that side but it's also going to pull it up a little bit it's going to pull it more or less in the direction that that spoke is aiming so it's going to pull it kind of up and away like so know, maybe that's a little clearer so again you tighten this spoke it's going to pull the rim up in that direction right okay so uh, I like to keep the two jaws for me it works better it, it's just visually easier because for one you know as these moving in and out these are going to be basically centered off of this line here in a perfect world your strands perfect they're going to go right up against this line and as you undo the knob they're going to both move the exact same distance from that center line okay so get our rim back here where you know approximately where it's going to be the length of the spokes and whatnot so rather than having the what I'll see a lot of guys do is they'll they'll take the uh, you know this jaw maybe comes up to the end they'll as far as to do the lateral truing they're going to put the the nubs right up against there which there's nothing wrong with that if you're just doing some minor minor lateral truing with the tire on you can certainly use do it in that fashion or you know it's working back and forth and then you can just center you know by tightening you know say it's just 
it's not up and down really, it's just got some side to side lateral movement. You can, let's say it's over towards this way, so we can maybe back this spoke off, maybe a quarter turn, tighten this spoke maybe a quarter turn or so, and it's going to just take the rim straight over that way. Um, but that's, you know, whatever. If, if the rim is not just side to side, let's say it's got some up and down, and it's got some side to side. So what I like to do is, basically I'll just use these, I'll form a little square right here at the rim. That's all the way up on it. it we're not going to get that far. We're going to go back a little give that rim a little room to breathe as it's moving around. So typically what I like to do is go off the radial first or kind of focus on that. So I'll bring these up, let the rim do its thing side to side, but find out those low spots where the rim is coming down, it's hitting the calipers. Uh, you can do that visually or you can do it by hear sound or I mean typically I do both. So as let's say this the rim's hitting somewhere right in here so it's hit it's low here but it also needs to go that way a bit so um, if you tighten this side here it's gonna pull it up so you know this is just a rudimentary basic it's gonna center it up there you know obviously you're gonna keep picking away at it but if you go off of the radial so the bottom but meanwhile you tighten your spokes in combination to keep this centered between the two these two points simultaneously um, it it just it seems a lot easier to me you got a gauge there that shows you where the center of the rim should be um, so sometimes it seems easier to just focus on one thing as far as just the radial but when you do that it's gonna affect the the lateral somewhat if you're just you're not really paying attention to where this is going side to side like say you you just uh, put something, you know, the jaw, you have one jaw and you're just going off a radial so you can get it towards pretty round this way but you really have no control, you have no gauge showing you where it should be if it's out of dish or whatever so um, that's kind of what I, what I shoot for typically is to keep this nice little box there and then you're just fitting the box within the box and you just spin your wheel and quarter turn here or there and pick away at it sometimes you got to loosen the spokes if it's you're you know it's coming up too high but that's kind of the the basic gist of my method hopefully that makes sense so uh yeah let's just jump right into uh working on this wheel okay so <clears throat> this is uh my daughter's wheel here you can see in the camera looking straight at it that we're out there just a little bit but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take this just a step further and just randomly uh, start just see if we can get this thing out of whack even further kind of just randomly tightening and loosening some random spokes here any old direction loosening tightening so I want to get this thing out of whack pretty far and then we'll just do a full-on time-lapse of right, so we're, we're out of whack there just a little so anyway what we're gonna do first here is I'm gonna gonna gradually move our lower knob there that controls the arms move these up towards the rim till I get it to just start to make some noise so a little too far okay so we got that's a pretty good little chip the way that's sounding that's kind of a good indicator that the edge of the uh, the seam of the rim is right there so can't really see it from the side camera but from the bottom camera you can see that the rim is needs to go over that way a little bit as well so I'm gonna tighten 
this spoke right here it was a little loose I think that was one of the ones I loosened so I turned it a full turn so we got rid of that noise so let's let's take our lateral calipers in there just a little bit not necessarily touching the rim but I just want to kind of we're tightening the gap here so I'm going to go back with the radial arm go up so we still got some noise in that point but we're starting to get pretty centered so at this point I'm going to focus on maybe a group of three or four spokes here so we'll do this spoke we'll just go a quarter turn I'm going to go a little more on that one because you know this being a being a rear wheel the spokes these are the drive side spokes these this is a non drive side spoke so it's the flange is offset this way so when I tighten the, the non drive side spokes it's going to have more of a pulling effect sideways the drive side spokes will have more of a pulling upwards effect so go to this third spoke Okay, we may have loosened that one up because it feels a little tight. So I'll go back to this one. Alright, so I'll give it a little test spin. So we're getting into this area. You know, again, it's basically rubbing radially. So it's rubbing on the bottom of the caliper there, but the rim is over that way. So we're going to focus more on putting a little tension on the the non-drive side here so you can see as I'm turning that it's pulling the rim over that way in addition to pulling it up as well so basically we're just that's really what we're doing we're just picking away at it just if a uh, rim is fairly tensioned you just want to take small little bites and then you know at some point even if, if we look on the bottom if you see areas where like right in here say so basically from this spoke this spoke this spoke and this spoke we got this group of four I'm actually going to back these off just a little because we do have a little bit of a gap under here just a quarter turn each there just take small turn them too much and that's when you can get into trouble well you know as you're making your adjustments make them in a just keep note that you're trying to keep this rim centered between these two edges as well there so just tightening it up a little focusing on keeping it centered And you know, in addition to just going off the rubbing noise, you can see I've put this little piece under here. And is this camera the main camera that's facing straight on? It gives you a nice line of sight. You can see the the difference between the the gaps there between the rim and the calipers. Uh, you know, I'm from where I'm at. I can't see it because the camera's blocking my view. So I'm just going off the sound here. I step back and look at it from the side I can kind of see the gaps under there uh, another common error that typically beginners will make you know they'll pick away at a wheel like this 
just tighten, tighten, tighten. You get to the point where you're you're adding too much tension. So always be aware of the high the high spots there as well, or the hops, and you can actually begin to start loosening some of the points in the rim. So um, you know, again, you want to you're focusing on a the dish, which is keeping this centered. You know, you're, we're working the lateral, and then we're working the radial. We're basically doing everything simultaneous there. So we're not focusing just on one thing. And, you know, another issue is if you focus on just one thing, it also will affect the other things as well. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it seems easiest to me to just do it all at once. Uh, or the basic focus is to get the the radio which is going to get the wheel nice and round and then you know typically once you know as you can see also we're doing this w without the tire on if you have a wheel that's just you know has some mild lateral issues you can true it with the tire on you know and then just use the, your basic the the pointy ends right up to the edge of the rim there if it's just something like that but you know again something like that i'll typically just do it with the wheel on the bike because you can use brake pads or you can sometimes i'll even just hold the hold the my spoke wrench right on the top of the tube and you can just kind of go off of that and um you know, you don't even necessarily have to have a zip tie, but you can just true it right on the on the bike if it's just some mild lateral truing. Okay, so we're picking away at it, and you know this rim's got a it's got one little spot there where it looks like it might have gotten smacked a little or something. But. back this off here just slightly He's uh, tightened in the calipers just a little bit. We're just constantly taking our tolerances in just a little with the calipers. And, you know, just fine tuning it. And, you know, there comes a point where you, you, you can get to where, you know, I'd say really honestly where this wheel is right now would probably be acceptable I mean we're, we're within a probably a millimeter there laterally I don't know probably about the same maybe a little less radially and then you know something I typically do when I'm it's kind of hard to see because we're sort of close up but I'll do it more in the middle portion but just you know grabbing these groups of spokes and just Kind of getting a good feel of the tension, you know, and it's as far as the actual tension number. That that's one thing, but you kind of want to strive for getting it more or less even. I mean, you don't want a spoke that's you can wiggle that's super loose, you know, and then you don't want you can generally tell if one's significantly tighter than any of the others. Um, but yeah, we're that's a pretty good. You know, there's some little, this is just a cheapy rim, so there's a little bit of deflections there. It's not a perfect rim, but um, that's not going to rub the brakes, um, and it's, uh, you're not going to feel that when you're riding. You know, we could sit here and pick away at it just a little more and get it, probably take a half a millimeter out of both ends. But, um, yeah, that's basically, uh, you know, kind of the gist of, doing it you know a good way to just practice is to take an old wheel and just um, you know do it kind of what I did maybe a little 
you know, practice puzzles, just randomly spin it, loosen and tighten them some spokes, probably do more loosening um, so that way you don't end up with a wheel that's too tight. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to, I think, do it for this video for just some basics. I'll get into a little more thorough wheel truing video as far as if we're building a wheel and how to bring it up to tension and kind of go from there from scratch and then maybe some more, um, you know, a little more complex things if some other is complex issues uh, so yeah feel free to if you have questions or comments you want to see something else covered feel free to put it there in the in the uh, description or the comments and uh, I'll definitely answer it address it and maybe we'll do something else so anyway that's gonna do it for this particular video and I appreciate you watching thanks